Uh, that should say lesson 11. Way to go. Oh, right. Sounds like it's going to be hard. It's a hard. No. Oh, wait a minute. Let's go. So you had a quiz on 7, 8, 9, 10, and 10. And we'll do 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. You'll have a quiz on 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Bring it all together, and we'll have a test. Okay. There's only three tests. This uh, semester. Okay. So you've already taken 33% of the tests. 33.3333333. Two more tests. And then the final. <coughs> what? That's 1,000 short answer questions. Okay. Uh, an experiment, so like a probability experiment, <coughs> is considered binomial if all of the following conditions are true. Uh, number one, we're going to have a fixed number of... number of independent trials. That means any any trial does not affect the probability of another. For example, I'm going to flip a coin ten times. I'm doing it ten times. It's a fixed number of coin flips. Each coin flip does not determine the probability of getting head to tail on the next coin flip. <coughs> There are only two possible outcomes. We'll call them success and failure. Success doesn't mean like, yippee, we did it. Success is just the thing that I'm looking for. So I flip the coin ten times. I'm looking for the, the probability of uh, a certain number of times of getting heads. So getting heads would be success, getting tails would be fail. Probability of success is constant. <clears throat> so every time I flip a coin, probability of getting ahead, getting ahead is one half. Doesn't matter how many times I flip the coin, the probability is one half. It's not going to change. And last but not least, we'll have a variable involved here. And the variable is the number of successes. Is the So if we have a situation that uh, where we have de dependent events, it can't be binomial. So a binomial experiment wouldn't be like flipping a coin all the 
right, so let's use some. Um, we talk about a binomial experiment, experiment where you use the letter N <coughs> to represent the number of trials. P to represent the probability of success. <laughs> and we'll use Q to represent the probability of failure. say that Q is the same as 1 minus P. Q and P should add up to 1. Or 100%. And lastly, X is going to be our variable. really quick. First, somebody tell me if uh, the following scenario is binomial or not. So I have a, a certain surgical procedure that has an 85% chance of success. A doctor performs the procedure on eight patients. Uh, yep. It is. There's only two things that can happen. It works or it doesn't. So in that scenario, uh, him performing on eight patients means that N is eight, 85% chance of success, 0.85 is P, Q is one minus 0.85, so 0.15. And then X, the variable, would be all the possible outcomes. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, we're going to find the pro probability of certain amounts. So maybe like exactly four out of this. How about a jar contains five red marbles, nine blue marbles, six green marbles. You randomly select three marbles from the jar without replacement. Can it be binomial? How about Well... Success could be picking a red mark. What's the thing that makes it non-binomial? Without, without replacement. Without replacement changes the probability. So if I if I choose five marbles and I don't put them back, the probability of getting a certain color is going to change. Questions about whether or not it's binomial or not. All right, so let me give you
You know, that would just, you know, one side of the thing. So if we have a binomial experiment and we want to know the probability of a certain number of successes, we can use that formula to figure out the probability. It means we're excited about n. Exclamation is factorial. So it's n factorial divided by n minus x factorial times x factorial. Factorial means you take the number and you multiply it by all the numbers below it. So 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Uh, what's nice is that this whole piece here uh, represents a combination of n things done x ways. So we can boil this down to something we can put in the calculator. There's still a little number crunch next. Okay, so let's do an example of this. Use it. So our book likes to use a lot of medical examples. So if we have a uh, certain type of knee surgery that has a 75% chance of success and it's performed on three patients. So first, Values for all uh, four of our letters. What number is that? It's number example two. Oh, I forgot y'all. If you're on two hundred four, it's example two. And you'll see that uh, if you go there, you'll see that they do it by making a uh, tree diagram and finding all the places where. There's two successful knee surgeries and finding out those probabilities. Uh, we're going to do it much simpler by using the formula. So we want to perform the knee surgery on three patients. That's our number of trials. The probability this surgery is successful and your knee is fixed is 0.75. Make sure you use the decimal form. We don't want to put percents into the formula. So that means Q is 1 minus 0 0.75. And you all know it's going to be 0.25. And then they ask to find the probability that it's successful on exactly two patients. So our X is going to be two. We want two successful knee surgeries. 
But we'd like three, but we want to know the probability there's exactly two. So we'll take our information, we'll, we'll uh, replace all the letters in the formula with the appropriate numbers. So I'm going to be a stickler on a quiz that involves something like this, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to expect you to, to show me this. What's that? I haven't figured that out yet. So I would err on the side of caution and know it. I'm going to roll that around for, for a day this year. We'll, we'll see. So, like, two question marks on, like, two like, two That would be kind of cool. <laughs> With the uh, factorials? Yeah. No. It's the same thing. You know, it's like, it's good to know where you came from. I also can show you how, like, you can get the same answer going both ways. Um, so to, to get this piece in your calculator, and the reason I want to see this is because if you just give me a number and it's wrong, sometimes it doesn't mean you did the wrong thing. It means you pressed the wrong button. So I like to spin this positively and say, I want you to do that so that I can give you credit where credit is due. If you just give me a wrong answer, even though the only mistake you made was pressing a wrong button. I can't, I can't help. So in your calculator, the first thing you'll put in is uh, the N, three. And then you'll hit math. Go over to PRB, we are doing probability. And it's choice three, N, C, R. They use R instead of X. And then put in the value of x, too, and hit enter. So this piece of the puzzle is 3. So I'll say that again. You put the first number in, so 3. Then you go to math, over to probability down to where it says NCR, it's choice three. Then you put the second number in two, and you hit enter. That's three C2, which is three. And then we can just uh, do the rest of these calculations. 0.75 to the second power. Point two five to the first power, since it's 3 minus 2. And then we can just put it all together. So in context, because we should be in context when a, when a, a question is given to us in context. We wanted to know the probability of exactly two successful knee surgeries. So we would report that we have approximately a 42% chance of getting exactly two successful knee Uh, 
Uh, I always like to do this. Make each of these calculations separately so that I don't forget a parentheses or something like that and get a wrong answer because it's the count. So, let me add on to this. Let me change the question. I want to know that the, the scenario is the same, except now I want to know the probability that I get at most, at most, two successful meetings. So, what are my possibilities? possibilities for being at most two successful meetings. What's that? Two and one? Is that it? So I could have two successful knee surgeries. I could have one. I can also have zero. So I want you to, since we found the, uh, the probability of getting two, I want you to find the probability of getting one and the probability of getting zero. So take a couple minutes and do that. Uh, so who got the probability of getting one? So it's it's point one four zero six two five. Uh, somewhere I think maybe you didn't change something. That's what I got for zero. That's what you got for zero? Did you have this? Three C one? Oh I still square this. You still square this? Yeah. So this value comes from N. Forget to change something? Yeah, Cool. Uh, so the only the only number that changes is the the x. So anywhere that it was two before it's gonna be one. And then anywhere it was two before for this one will be zero. And we should get These are or probabilities. So to bring it all together and find the probability of at most two successful knee surgeries, I'll add the probability of having two, the probability of having one, and the probability of having zero. They're, they're mutually exclusive. I can't have exactly two if I have exactly one. So I'm just going to add them all together.
So you'll see it written this way. The probability of uh, at most 2 means that your variable is going to be 2 or less than 2. So less than or equal to 2. So I just added all three of these. 0, 1, 2. And I get that that probability is approximately 57.8%. If I were to ask for at least two, then I would be looking for exactly two or exactly.